How's it going everyone? Welcome to the 4 Mar Ranch YouTube channel. Today I'm putting out a video that's a little bit overdue. In fact, it's about three months overdue. And that is a one year update review to one of my favorite optics to date, which is the ATN Thor 4. Now this one in particular is the four and a half to 18 power rocking a 384 by 288 sensor. So a little spoiler alert right there, that if it's one of my favorite optics to date, obviously that means overall I've had some pretty positive experiences. So if you're a really impatient person, you've gone far enough in this video, go ahead, click off to the next one, you have the overall answer. However, if you are someone thinking about investing in this, especially with the price tag of thermal optics, you may wanna stick around to hear the pros and cons and my overall experience with this optic, which we're gonna get into in a little bit more detail. Now, first things first, this is not an in-depth review. I did put out a fairly in-depth video a little over a year ago now. Like I said, this is a one year update. So if you are someone who's just looking into the initial specs, I will have a link in the description below to where you can watch that video, get the full details. This is more or less a recap and just trying to put out some information um, as far as if any of my opinions have changed in the last year while using this optic pretty regularly. Also, I'm gonna have some links down below to some hunting footage, YouTube being the way it is these days. If I put some hunting footage in here, there's a good chance this video will get unmonetized, which is what it is. However, YouTube's algorithm will then not circulate it as much, and I'm trying to reach as many people as I can to put out this information without YouTube basically throwing this video in the trash. So just to give everyone a data point on where I'm coming from, basically want to just talk very briefly about how I use it. So this is stored in a gun safe until it's used. When it is pulled out for hunting or the gun range, it's pretty much just laid in the back seat of my truck, which is driven off-road. There's some bumps and obviously your off-road vibration. Now I've never dropped this optic, so I can't tell you uh, the durability standpoint from there. Because of the price tag of this, I am pretty careful and aware. Um, it doesn't feel like a cheap or flimsy optic. I think if you dropped it, it'd probably be okay. Obviously, you want to check your zero depending on the reliability of how you have it mounted. But that's how I use it. Um, and I have not had any you know, red flags to date about the physical reliability. Um, the only real complaint from a physical aspect is to do with how ATN covered the um, charging port and SD card port. They're just these little flimsy rubber covers. And uh, again, without getting into too much detail, because I already covered that in both my initial review and a six month update review. Okay, so with all that said, I just wanna briefly talk about kind of my um, backstory using ATN products. My very first ATN product was actually their Excite 2 HD. I stumbled across a YouTube video like many of you are probably doing right now. And I thought it was pretty cool seeing some night vision um, hunting footage. I live in South Texas. We obviously have a hog problem. I have a lot of opportunity to go hunting with uh, night capable optics. And I watched the video and I was like, oh man, if only I could afford you know, to get into the night vision game. Did a little Google search, found out that that optic was about $650 at the time of its release. It was fairly new when I saw that video. And I, I went to the store that night. I went to a local academy, Sports and Outdoors, and I purchased with my own money an ATN Excite 2 HD. It was a three to 14 power and I absolutely loved it. I used that thing for about a year and a half and then ATN released the 4K Pro model and I bought that and it was a huge improvement. Not to say that the Excite 2 HD wasn't a great optic because it was, but I, I moved up and I, I was like, wow, this is a huge difference. And even when getting the Excite 2 HD, uh, it was, no pun intended, a night and day difference. I was a typical hunter that went from just basically hoping I saw hogs out around sundown or, you know, seeing deer or whatever during the day. Um, obviously, you know, check your local laws. You can't necessarily use night vision scopes on anything. There's still some rules. Um, but getting back to the point, it was a huge, huge difference to my hunting game. The 4K Pro made another huge difference and then about two, maybe two and a half years of using ATN's night vision, I went ahead and I got into the thermal game with their Thor 4. And I cannot tell you how big of a difference it made going from night vision to thermal. 
Now I have put out a night vision versus thermal comparison video. That was probably almost a year ago as well. And in that video I was trying to explain, hey, just because thermal has the higher price tag doesn't necessarily mean that it's the better optic. They have their different applications. Each one shines better in different ways. Just a quick example of that. Thermal is gonna be really good for detection where night vision is gonna do better at identification. It keeps more detailed resolution. However, with night vision, you gotta kinda of know the direction you need to be looking at. Where thermal, you scan a field, something's glowing, boom, you know it's there. However, if you're far enough away, you may not be able to tell what that is without getting closer. So that was that video pretty much summarized. Again, I'll have a link in the description below, night vision versus thermal comparison using ATM products. So it's kind of a one-to-one -one comparison because that was the sample size I had. So now that we have all that housekeeping and a little bit of backside out of the way, let's get into my one year's worth of experience with this Thor 4. So first things first, with any optic, you want it to be reliable. And this is a little bit more of a concern, obviously, with an electronic optic compared to your standard optical rifle scope, right? Reliability isn't necessarily something that is high on the list of priorities when you're looking for a regular scope. However, with electronic sights, it obviously is. Now, in my entire year of using this, this optic has frozen on me, but only one single time. So the image pretty much froze up, and I believe it was about a 10 or 15 second delay. I held the power button down, it shut off, I pressed the power button again and it fired right back on and I continued on with what I was doing. Uh, there was a firmware update since then and I have not had a single issue to date um, since that update. So uh, did it have 100% reliable performance in the course of now a year and three months? Uh, the honest answer is no, it, it did freeze on me. However, uh, pretty much 99.99% .99 reliable um, if you think about the time spent behind this optic compared to that 15 seconds of freezing. So I'm not disappointed. It is what it is, but that's all I have to report is that one incident there. Uh, kind of in the realm of reliability, I guess, and I do cover this in some of my other videos. Uh, before a update, that was probably two or three updates ago by now, uh, I would sometimes get some interesting noise with this optic when going from a really cold environment, uh, relatively cold, like the air conditioning of my truck to the you know relatively warm environment, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, possibly 100 degrees in South Texas, um, just kind of exposing, I guess, that sensor to the drastic temperature differences. They're not the entire image, but I would get some, uh, almost some washout that would kind of move across the image itself. Uh, again, it, it was a temporary thing, and since the, the update, after I saw that happening, um, I have not had that repeated. So that was probably about six to seven months into using this optic. Okay, so while we're still kind of on the subject of electronics and reliability with that, obviously your optic is no good without a strong battery. So this does have an internal battery. It has an advertised battery life of I believe 18 hours. It's been quite a while now, over a year since I really dived deep into the specs. Um, I and a part of the reason that I don't really have that number on top of my head, although I'm pretty sure that uh, it is 18 hours, I'll leave an annotation if uh, I was wrong, but uh, I have not once had this die on me while hunting, while at the gun range, um, while using it regularly. I have killed the optic one time and that's because it was uh, unfortunately not powered down when I put it in the gun safe. So I you know, went back and it was dead and uh, I plugged it in for a little bit before going out and good to go, didn't die. I would say it probably takes two to four hours to charge all the way depending on where you left it and of course what kind of um, power adapters you're using um, and the speeds that it's charging at. And it, it truly, um, I, I believe the 18 hour quote that ATN puts out there because again, I have not once killed this optic in a regular um, sense other than being forgetful and forgetting to power it down. Um, if you can drain an 18 hour battery life, then you are on one heck of a hunt or excursion, or maybe you're really out in the sticks and you don't have a uh, power bank to then charge it because you can have this optic plugged into an external battery pack. In fact, uh, way back again, trip to the past when I was using the Excite 2 HD, that thing was a battery hog and I would actually strap a battery pack to the handguard of my rifle. Um, just to keep that thing powered without worrying about it. But the 4K Pro and the ATN Thor 4 with the internal battery never had an issue. It's an inc 
incredibly either efficient system or a very strong battery. So either way, um, on the user's end, it, it worked great. It did not die on me. And it's kind of made me a little lazy, in all honesty, because it's so efficient that I no longer really charge it after every use. Um, I'll charge it maybe every three to four times of taking it out a hunting if I see that I'm getting closer to the halfway point uh, on the battery level indicator within the optic, then I'll, I'll plug it in for a couple hours before going out. And other than that, I just kind of forget about it and don't worry about it. So the last thing in terms of reliability is uh, this optic's ability to maintain zero. Um, again, I have some hunting videos on there. Uh, I want to say I've probably verified the zero in the past year, probably once a quarter, just uh, being conservative on that guess there. So every three months or so, I'll, I'll take it to the range and actually put some uh, targets and verify my zero. Not once have I had to make any serious changes. I'd say maybe half an MOA of shifting over the course of a year, but keep in mind it is on a quick detach mount. So every now and then um, that mount, you know, it'll get taken on and off the optic. So it could be part of the tolerances of the mount, could be the optic shifting over time. But again, uh, I would guess at most uh, shift I've ever seen over the course of a year is a half MOA. So pretty negligible to the point that it could have just been me, the shooter. Um, and again, I, I have some videos where it shows that it pretty much hits dead on where I'm aiming. And the point of me mentioning that I've only checked the zero about four times a year is because obviously I'm putting out a lot more hunting videos than I have time to, you know, check the zero. So you'll, you can kind of be a judge for yourself and see that those rounds are going exactly where I left that zero. So I would call its ability to maintain a zero very, very effective. One uh, point to keep in mind with electronic optics is you're not actually moving um, mechanical parts on the inside like you do an optical rifle scope with those crosshairs. It's essentially assuming this optic stays mounted uh, in the same position relative to the barrel of your firearm and upper receiver if we're talking an AR platform like this. Um, there should be no reason to lose your zero because essentially you have an electronic image and when you zero inside this optic you're just saying hey this pixel on the sensor is where my zero is set to. So if this doesn't move, if you have a solid mount, uh, whether it's this ATN quick detach mount or something else, because it does have 30 millimeter rings, so you can kind of pick and choose whatever you'd like, um, it, it's good to go. Honestly, no issues. I've had no concerns. Uh, if, I, if it's towards the end of that three month period before I check the zero, I've not once worried about, oh man, I hope I hit my, uh, you know, my target when I'm hunting. Now, one last note, uh, the only other kind of data point I can speak to in terms of reliability is uh, the optic, in my experience, has also been reliable when powering it on after it's been off for extended periods. So I would say the longest this has gone without me using it, and uh, just again, kind of conservatively guessing here, I didn't actually keep a log, unfortunately, but uh, four to six weeks, give or take a week. And uh, that's this sitting in a gun safe completely not being touched, not being powered on, and when I go to use it for the first time after that period, it powers right on, doesn't freeze, doesn't take any longer. Uh, battery level has not drained any further. Uh, again, good to go. So you can kind of forget about it, walk away. Whenever you're ready, it's going to be ready. Uh, again, based off my experience over the course of the last year and some change. So uh, trying to keep this short and sweet. Again, I'm really not wanting to get into um, all the specs I kind of covered already. I have a one, the initial review, I have a six month update. So um, I would say my thoughts and opinions are pretty much the same. I'm incredibly happy with this optic. It's now made me pretty much neglect my night vision setup uh, so much so that I went ahead and I did sell my very first ATN optic to a buddy of mine for a pretty good deal. So I no longer have the Excite 2 HD 3 to 14 power that is now gone. Um, I'm hanging on to the 4K Pro for the time being in case I do go hunting with a friend. One of us will use thermal, the other will use the night vision and it actually makes a pretty awesome combination when used together because someone is essentially the spotter with the thermal and the person with the night vision can then positively identify what it is the thermal is picking up. So um, it makes a really awesome pair. Now you can do that with two rifle scopes 
or ATN also has some binoculars, both thermal and night vision, so you can kind of mix and match. Honestly, if you have the means to do so, I think that would be your perfect setup. Um, having thermal binoculars or uh, night vision binoculars and pairing it with the opposite um, optic, I think you're gonna be golden. Um, you'll spot everything you wanna see and be able to see it in detail. I'm trying to keep this as short and sweet, yet as informative as possible. So if you do have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I try to be pretty responsive with any technical questions you guys might have. Um, if you'd like to see anything specific about this optic, please leave that in the comment below and maybe I can put a separate video out there. Like I said, do check the description. There's gonna be the in-depth initial review, a six month follow-up review, and a handful of pretty good hunting footage so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what you'll be able to capture, record, and see firsthand through this optic. Um, other than that, I really appreciate you taking the time to stop by the 4 Ranch YouTube channel. And as always, guys, have a good one.